Welcome to our Liber Arstats Club. Today we're going to talk about uh, tidying data, um, um, which is for like uh, reorganizing data and uh, um, and like the concept of tidy data um, and all of that. Um, and so uh, we're going to be running some code today. Um, so in case you haven't, uh, could you please uh, run this code on your R computer in the meantime, um, just install some of these packages. Um, ideally, you should have R 4.0 um, installed. Um, sorry, can, can we just test one, test one thing? Can, can any of you speak? Because I'm not sure if I'm hearing you. I know you can hear me, but I'm not sure if you can hear me, if I can hear you. Up. Oh, okay. I can hear. Oh, Most of thanks. us are just muted. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay. This is because uh, I'm using a different type of uh, of screen sharing this time. I'm like having Zoom uh, um, show you my audio from my computer. Um, uh, that's why I wasn't sure if it was working. All right. So while this stuff is is installing, we'll we'll get to it at some point. Um, First, I just want to talk about some of the resources um, that I put on the Google um, Doc. The first one is a paper by Hadley Wickham, um, Wickham uh, called Tidy Data. Um, he has over nearly 160,000 downloads, this paper, which is pretty impressive. Um, and here you can find some of the example code and, and things that for that paper. I have already downloaded that file, um, that PDF, um, um, uh, and it's a pretty interesting paper. We won't go through it uh, today completely because I mean it's 23 pages long, but um, it explains the concept of what tidy data is, um, um, and like uh, some things, for example, where you can like. Um, uh, have data in what's called a long format uh, versus um, um, uh, a wide format. So for example, here we have a little table that has uh, rows A, B, and C. It has columns A, B, and C, and then it has different nine values. You can also represent that information as the row uh, ID, the column ID, and the value for it. And so A, B, C, and here gets repeated uh, three times in total. The column values also get repeated three times. Uh, but this is like a, um, uh, a long format of the data. And while it might not be the most, uh, you know, nice way to present data in a, in a paper, let's say, is actually the easiest way to analyze it later. Um, so this is a pretty good paper uh, to check out more things in detail. Uh, but that's like, let's say the theory of it a bit. Um, next, there is the R for data science book, which uh, is typically abbreviated as R4DS. Um, you'll see that acronym a lot of times on the web or um, on Twitter, if you're looking at R stats um, Twitter. Um, and so this is a great book by also Hadley Wickham, the same author of that paper, but also Garrett, um, Grolmund, I, I hope I pronounced his name correctly. Um, and he has like a ton of people here that have contributed to it, uh, making like fixing typos or more, you know, more in detail stuff. And um, on the left side, there's uh, chapter 12, tidy data. Um, so this is like a different version of that same paper that I was showing you, um, a bit more digested. Um, and, for um, like educational purposes. So the idea is, there's like three rules here. The idea is that we're gonna have, uh, um, uh, each column is gonna be a, a different variable. Each row is gonna be an observation. And then inside of the uh, cells, we're just gonna have the values or the information. Um, in order to do, to get to data like that, you needed to do what's called pivoting. Um, 
So this is when you have, let's say, um, a wide format and you didn't make it longer. That's a, a common type of um, operation, uh, people need, uh, making the data longer. But there's also some cases where you want to make it wider. Um, so for example, this image here shows like a legal table. Um, oh, I just zoomed in and lost. Uh, I was trying to zoom into the image. Um, here there's a legal table that is on a uh, wide format and uh, we're pivoting the data to make it longer. And so that just means that this 745 in, uh, cell for 1999 for the country of Afghanistan gets um, put into uh, this cell over here that has like now one uh, variable called country, another one called year instead of like one column for 1999 and then a second column for 2000. Um, um, and so the way you can do this, there's multiple ways of doing this in R. Um, one of them is now the pivot longer fun uh, pivot underscore longer function from the tidyverse. Um, and this is the function that um, they recommend using nowadays. There's a lot of other functions. People might have heard about melt and cast um, from reshape and also the reshape two package. They might have also heard about gather and spread, which were functions in the tidy R package. And we're actually gonna hear those names in the, in the YouTube video. Um, Pivot longer and pivot wider. They're the, uh, the latest iterations of how to explain this stuff um, and how to do, make, try to make it as user-friendly and as powerful and fast as possible. Um, so um, the complementary to pivot longer is pivot wider. So this is where we can like learn more of the details of those functions. Um, uh, there's also a Spanish community translation of the R4DS book. Um, and because this book has been really popular, there's a community now on Twitter um, uh, called R4DS Community. This was created by, uh, uh, I'm blanking on her name right now. Um, uh, let's see if I can find her. Um, Jesse Mossipak, that she's the one that created uh, this community original, originally. She's no longer involved because so, it grew, grew up quite big. But Jesse Mustipak, which I'll just put her, um, put her Twitter uh, handle on the Google Doc. Um, uh, so she's um, a person that um, learned how to code in data science later in her in her uh, career. And she was like interested in, in learning with other people. So she created this community and then it like blew up, became a really big thing. Um, and you can see how like 10,000 followers, they have their own Slack workspace, which might be of interest to, to people here. I actually have enjoyed that because I, I mean, a lot of this stuff is um, stuff that is new to me um, and I haven't dedicated the time to learn it. Uh, from the R for Data Science Community Twitter page, you can end up in this website, r4datasci.com, uh, where they talk about learners, mentors, and community, and there's Slack over here. Um, and it's apparently like a really great place to, to learn uh, more about tidying data and really to go over this book by Hadley. Uh, we can, uh, I believe that Luis has gone through the book, so she might be our local expert in this. Um, and so something that uh, was born from the community is called Tidy Tuesday. And initially Tidy Tuesday was an effort to practice as a community, uh, the process of tidying data. Uh, some uh, people have argued that now it's become really like a, a way to show off your skills type of thing. Um, and not as uh, beginner friendly as it used to be, but like, I, I mean, um, I see the tweets here and there, and like they make all these really awesome things with it. And what Tidy Tuesday really is, is that they publish a data set that is messy in some way on Tuesdays. And then they want people to experiment with the data. Um, and so we're actually gonna use 
their latest iteration of the data of, uh, of I mean of data sets, and is one from uh, beach volleyball. Um, they have like information about players and statistics about beach volleyball. Um, so that's why I wanted you to install the tidy Tuesday R package because that's how we're going to access the data in uh, in a couple of uh, minutes. Uh, before we get to that, though. Um, uh, uh, I want to introduce to you another person called David Robinson. David Robinson, he's actually a former genomics PhD student. He did his PhD with uh, John Story uh, at Princeton. Um, Story uh, was the advisor of my PhD advisor, Jeff Leake. Uh, so we're like um, academically related, let's say. Um, and so David has, uh, he has become really a a, a big internet uh, sensation in explaining code um, and like helping train other data scientists. He has this blog called variance which I really like. Um, um, and he recently um, uh, became the principal data scientist of this company, Heap. Now, um, uh, he has really great posts. Uh, one of them that I like is, uh, is about why you should have a blog. Um, advice to um, aspiring data scientists, which could be uh, uh, of interest for some of you. But um, what David does is that he, every Tuesday, he actually now does um, a live webcast for one hour where he goes through one of these uh, tidy Tuesday data sets. Um, and so I saw earlier in the week this tweet and I was like, oh, perfect, we need to talk about tidy data. So let's look at this. So um, um, if we click here on the, on the link for the YouTube video, I mean, we'll find the video and from the video, we'll find the link for um, the data itself, which was what I was already showing you over here. This website over here that has the, the beach volleyball image. Um, this website here, they describe how you can get the data, which we'll do in a second. They also describe like, okay, what is, there's a data dictionary for what each of the columns is. Um, and we can see, for example, there's a date of the match uh, column, a year of the tournament column, gender, um, and a lot of other columns here. There's like a ton of information. Um, so um, that's the data that we'll be exploring um, how to do tidy, tidying data with. Um, now, uh, instead of starting the video from the very beginning, I wanted you to show you this portion that is minute 30, almost basically minute 39. So let's see how this goes with, um, with Zoom. And ideally, you should be able to hear the sound. Uh, something about analyzing a question and then you froze. Oh, all right. So let me start. <laughs> yeah, you had just paused the video. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. So I was saying, like, I don't know if any of you heard what um, uh, uh, what David was answering in that question, but he was trying to explain his main steps that he does when he is looking at a new data set. Um, so in this particular data set, he was asking, like, what does one row represent? Is it one observation? And this particular data set, one row represented one match of data. Uh, then he found that some columns, um, multiple columns, actually represent the data for a specific player. Um, and so that's when he noticed that, oh, this is a data set that is on a wide format, and I might need to make it a long format. Um, OK. So uh, I was hoping we could watch the beginning of his video and see him play around with things. Uh, he, uh, he like writes a lot of code and edits it out and then like keeps going. But uh, I'm not sure this uh, YouTube stuff is working right now. Um, so this, was, this would probably be better at, at an in-person meeting. <laughs> yeah. um, so let's just, uh, let me share my screen now and let's go back to, I guess, our usual format. Um, 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 Okay. So, uh, so this video is great. I watched it yesterday. Uh, if you want to 
uh, see it yourselves later after the meeting. Uh, when you watch it, the chat replays automatically as if it were live, and you can see people interacting with him. He has almost 7,000 subscribers. It's a pretty popular um, uh, webcast that he has. Um, so at the end of the webcast, like a day later or so, David uh, shares the code uh, that he, the final code that he wrote for um, a particular session. So what I want you to do is to find this code over here that I uh, put on the Google Doc, and then we're going to download the file. So um, in order to download the file, let's see, what do we need to do? Um, we need to click over here on the raw button. Um, well, uh, and then from there on your browser, you can right click save as, and that will download the file. Um, for some reason, it has a .txt extension. Uh, I'm going to remove that. I want to save it on my desktop. Um, um, you need that. Um, I did add a TXT extension. Uh, all right. I want to use the R Markdown extension. So once I do that, I'm going to go to my R Studio window that I already had open. And I'm going to open the file from, um, from my desktop. Right. Just gonna make my R Studio window bigger. Um, so, um, so the first thing that uh, Davy does is that he loads the tidyverse package because that has a lot of the uh, the tidyverse is an R package that um, contains functions for many other um, many other functions. After that, um, I mean many other packages. Sorry. Then he also loads the scales package. Scales is a package that helps for visualizing data. Um, and so this tidyverse, he loaded the ggplot2, table, tidyr, per, string r for cats, et cetera. Scales is for like adding like percent symbols and things like that. Lubridate, which I forgot to mention on the email yesterday, um, is a package for dealing with dates. Um, which uh, we, he doesn't use until later on on the code, and we might not get to that point. Once he loads all the packages, he's like, oh, let's set a, a theme for the ggplot2 uh, plot, and he likes the light theme, so that's what he does there. Next, we're going to use the tidy Tuesday R package to load the data. So we're actually loading the data from Tuesday this week, which was May 19, 2020. Uh, and, oh. Maybe I forgot it. Oh, I did this on my Windows computer. I forgot to install it. All right, let's uh, uh, let's install it quickly. Um, I was debugging stuff yesterday with Luis on my Windows computer. Um, uh, this is a fairly quick installation, I believe. Um, all right so now that i have the tidy tuesday package installed to tidy tuesday r package um, this function over here uh, downloads the data uh, these are fairly, um, I mean, it takes a little bit of time to download this data set. Uh, it took about like 20 seconds yesterday when I did this, uh, maybe a bit less. Um, um, and so it's going to download one file. Um, and so once we have that, um, we have now created a Q's data uh, object. Uh, from this uh, tidy Tuesday um, package. 
if you just print the object, it actually on the help side, it prints that, um, it, it helps you visualize that um, uh, readme that we were looking at um, earlier today. Uh, that explains all the different uh, variables and what they have and all of that. Um, so um, the next thing he does is uh, he says like, okay, I'm gonna be using this uh, volleyball, uh, beach volleyball, which I guess should have been the reverse for volleyball beach matches data set. Uh, that's the uh, available matches that is provided by this. Uh, uh, and then he is gonna add a match ID number. He does this using the mutate function. Uh, um, and he does this such, such that he can keep track of what was the original row numbers uh, when we read in the data. Um, now, there's a new operation symbol here, the pike symbol, which is percent greater than percent. And that's for saying the left side of the code I want to fit it to the right side of the code, in this case, the mutate function. Um, and so that's how, uh, this is a tidy verse way of, uh, of our operations. And if I print that table over here, it has uh, 76,000 um, matches and 66 columns for those matches. Um, so uh, let's, work a little bit on this together and then I'm going to use the breakout rooms uh, to have people explore some of this code. Um, so I think, uh, um, yeah, so I'll explain just a little bit of this and we'll, we'll break out uh, into smaller groups. Um, and we won't get to go through all of David Robinson's code and, um, but um, what I was thinking was that, uh, we could like um, um, learn a little bit about the code and potentially do more R, uh, leave our R-Stats club sessions on Tidy Tuesday data sets um, to keep learning about um, Tidy. So like instead of like um, doing a more traditional approach of let's look at a package, let's look at all the functions, things like that, let's see you know, what code other people have used, learn what functions they're using, and then from, you know, learn how to tidy data that way. So it's a more like practical approach, uh, what I'm thinking. But it involves, you need to have more time and more practice. All right. So the first thing that is doing here, lines 23 and 24, is that he's, uh, with the pipe symbol, he's feeding the, our matches data set uh, to the count function. And he wants to count a couple of variables that are present. Uh, there's a circuit variable, tournament variable, and date variable. Um, and so he wants to count those. Uh, this is a, a quick way of exploring. And it shows a little table under, underneath here that says there's a 703 rows. Because that's the number of unique circuit, tournament, and date combinations. So if we looked at his video, like he like quickly explores through this, this data just to get a bit of um, of a, a bird's eye overview of how big it is. Then he also is like, oh, I see that there's a gender column. What are the gender values um, providing in this data set? So he again uses the count function. And now we see that there's only two unique values, M and W, uh, each of them with around 58,000 uh, um, entries or so on, on average. Uh, next, this is the code that he was typing and like kind of gave up, but we can run part of it in lines 29 and 30 without that second pipe that he has, um, just to see the number of unique years. And we see that the years start with 2000. There's only 74 entries for your year 2000. Um, but it, then after that it picks up and it ends in 2019. So really this is a data set uh, of volleyball matches between um, 2000 and 2019 for um, uh, like 703 unique combinations of circuit tournament and date entries. Um, so uh, code chunks here 35 to 45. This is what we're gonna do a bit on the breakout session right now. 
it's a fairly complicated piece of code, right? Because it involves multiple functions. It involves a pipe symbol because we're feeding data, but we are piping it multiple times. So for example, here line 35, we start with our VB matches data set, and then we fit it into the rename function. The output of that rename function, we fit it into the mutate add function. Then we pipe it into pivot longer, which um, I mentioned earlier. Then once we made it wider, uh, sorry, longer, uh, then we pipe it into a separate function. And again, we pipe that into the mutate function. So there's multiple like steps here that he's doing to reorganize all the data. Um, and so uh, just to like, I'm gonna run this just to quickly show, it might be easier to explore a little bit the output of how this looks. Uh, this takes a couple seconds to run because we're, we're doing a lot of reorganization inside the data. Um, that's why he saves it into an object, uh, VB uh, underscore long. Um, 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 and so what I want people to do on the breakout session is like maybe inspect some of the help files for some of these functions. Um, and try to see like exactly what is, you know, what is his, what is going on over here. I'll give you um, a, a brief overview first, and then uh, then you can uh, uh, you can dive into it uh, more in smaller groups. Um, uh, okay, so now that it's run, uh, let's see uh, what it looks like. Um, David actually uses a lot the view function with capital V. Um, and this is a function that uh, works pretty nice if you're inside our studio because it opens like almost like an Excel-like interface um, uh, over here for viewing the data. You can filter, you can do things like that. And so uh, this long format that he made has 4,144,000 entries. We started with a data set that only had 76,000 rows, right? And so he made it like really, really long over here. But um, it looks kind of nice to us because now there's a column for circuit, another one for the tournament, country, year, date, uh, the gender of the player, the match number, um, what score what, uh, happened in the match. So this actually, this is uh, actually not split up yet by, um, by sets. Um, so a match can involve multiple sets. Um, uh, the duration of the match, uh, um, I guess the bracket, uh, round number, the match ID here. Uh, so um, uh, whether the uh, player was a winner or loser, player ID. So here for a single match, uh, there's five rows for player one and then five rows for player two and then another one for the team, um, et cetera. Um, so you, a lot of information gets a little bit repeated here, uh, but that's like how the long format works. Then the name, so there's actually like different variables for that player, like the name, the birth date, the age, the height, the country, that's for player one, and then you get the same information for player two, and the value for that uh, other column. Um, so, um, that's the, how he ends up with this uh, uh, long object. Uh, he will then do more things, like he eventually he creates a, a, an object at the set level, an object at the player level. And once he has that, then um, he summarizes some information across the players, um, um, gets the performance before 2019 and after 2019, measures them into a single table, um, and then he runs, actually, he makes a graph with each plot, and he runs um, generalized linear mixed model, uh, GLM also. Um, but we get, like, this is a lot of stuff, so let's uh, just backtrack, uh, and because we're learning about tidying data. And so this VB long object, right, involves a rename function, at some point he's saying like, we have a V, uh, sorry, W underscore player one column. 
so that's where it's useful to have this uh, table on the left side. So he has this W underscore player, and he's like, well, I want to do some things. Um, and in order to do that, he uh, renames that column and adds um, uh, an underscore P1 for saying player one uh, for the player name. And then it does the same thing for player two, the winning one, the losing one. Um, and basically he's adding underscores to this. He wants to have columns that have two underscore, uh, underscores in their name, just to make them more consistent with the rest, rest of the columns. Once he has that, then he can separate them by those that start with uh, winning or losing. Um, um, he's gonna make uh, uh, some columns uh, longer and he's gonna find those columns by those that start with the winning or the loser tag. Um, and he's gonna say like, okay, whether it's winning or losing, that's gonna go into my winner or loser uh, uh, variable. Uh, I'm gonna have the player as the second ID of, of the, between the underscores. And then the name, that's how he changes, that's how he labels the column name. So it will either be birth date, age, height, etc. cetera. Uh, he's separating those by like the underscore. Um, and there's some extra options here for the separate function, uh, extra mer and fill. Uh, but then once he has that, he's like, oh, I want to um, uh, change some of the text uh, for the winner-loser variable. He likes to have the winner-loser variable uh, for the, um, no, so here be belong. Winner-loser, he wants to have winner-loser as capital letters instead of underscore letters. So that's quite a bit of code over here. Um, and um, let me just use the breakout rooms to divide people up. I really wanted us to see uh, David in action because uh, he's like, he's like, um, if you think Andrew's fast, you haven't seen David. <laughs> um, and uh, he knows all these keyboard shortcuts and stuff and like codes stuff really fast and like, um, I guess he's been doing all this exploration of different data sets, so he knows all these functions, like off the top of his head. Of the top of his head, he doesn't even need to like look at uh, help files and be like, "Oh, what was the function name that like did this or that?" He just like um, watches it, um, and so uh, I think because we're like still like on a learning phase, like even if his video is one hour, we need to dissect it into smaller pieces, right? Um, uh, but I'm hoping you like this because it, uh, it's, it like it was a bit more practical. Um, but it uh, and I think we could just keep doing some more of this, and like uh, maybe alternating with like the genomic uh, topics that we're also mm -hmm. learning about um, to keep practicing, right? Because uh, it, for me, it's, uh, a lot of these functions are also new because uh, I don't actually use the tidyverse much. So like. Um, um, like I would need to like look at the hell files for a lot of these functions. For example, that separate function that has some complicated looking arguments. I would I like I don't have an I only saw it on the video yesterday. I haven't actually looked at the hell file, right? So I need to understand more what it's actually doing. Um, yeah, cool. So um, Svetlana suggested on the chat that it could be our homework to watch the video. Uh, so uh, uh, yeah, like. Um, so next week, uh, Kino and Jade is gonna present um, Lima. So that will be like on the genomic side, but maybe for two weeks from now, everyone could watch this video and we can spend some amount of time at the beginning, just like discussing what um, David Robinson did. Um, um, cool. So I think we'll end it for that today. Kristen, if you, don't, you have a bit of time, I can stay on with you and like help debug. Um, I'm sorry, I'm going to stop the recording. Uh.